Welcome back, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for what really is one of the, the highlights of today. Um, it's my pleasure now to hand over to um, our founder and director emerita, Dr. Heather Elgood, or Hetty to most of us, um, to say a few words uh, reminiscing on her time uh, as director of the Postgraduate Diploma in Asian Art and sharing her thoughts and reflections on this, her final day working at SOAS. So Hetty, over to you, the floor is yours. Hello to everyone. It is a really great privilege in one's life to be able to reflect on the intensely personal, and yet, as I hope to share with you today, my deep involvement in the postgraduate diploma, which has become so much part of my own journey. So I will start with what is intensely personal and tell you something I very rarely speak of, that my journey to SOAS started in four rather difficult, struggling years, studying painting down the road at St. Martin's School of Art. And in that context where everyone was struggling for their own personal creativity, what was original in inverted commas. And as part of this struggle, I discovered Persian painting. And it was in that search for a tradition that was not dependent on me, my personal original um, interpretation of myself that took me down the road, took me to meet somebody called Geza Vehevari, who said, yes, you can come to SOAS. So I went to SOAS and the piece of that library, in those days you could sit quietly on your table, nobody would take your space. And the excitement of that search in that library filled with all the knowledge you could possibly at that moment wish for was part of my journey. And then I started to study at SOAS in 1974 under the guidance of Geza Fehavari, the professor of Islamic art, and he cared about his students. And this is what I learned from him. And it's part of this opportunity that I was given, I would say. The opportunity, and as Naman pointed out, the ability to listen to dialogue. So what I'm afraid I'm going to read today is the result of this dialogue, of all of you, all of you who are on the panels today, Melanie, who was right there at the very beginning with me, Sheila, Emily, George, Tukten, all the tutors, Leslie, Stacy, Elaine, all the ones who know they really mattered to me and to the cause. I'm going to read to you all the various people, but really I have to thank. I just was there for the opportunity that suddenly gave itself to me and I tried to be faithful to it. It's much more about all of you than it is about me. So forgive me, because there are so many of you, I have to read my text, which I hate doing, but I will. So as I said, I started at SOAS in 1974, first with Geza as an MA student, then doing my doctoral research um, under Mr. Burton Page in 1981. In 1988, um, Geza and a Sotheby's Islamic expert called Jack Francis had the inspiration to set up this relationship between SOAS and Sotheby's, and it was called the SOAS Sotheby's Asian Arts Course. We were very lucky in having the support of the professor of Chinese art, um, then um, director of the Percival David Foundation, a professor Roderick Whitfield and Professor Yong Suk Pak, who both supported this initiative and designed and convened the first China and uh, Japanese and Korean modules. We are so grateful that they still, after all these years, continue to lecture and support us. Dr. Jeffrey King was then course director and it was thanks to him and working with him that we designed the Islamic module and Dr. John Ma, who has inspired so many of us for his deep commitment to India worked with me to design the Indian module. Sotheby's Institute, specifically Adriana Turpin, guided us very much to look at object-focused study 
in a different way and also give support to the decorative arts. After a few years, I took over from Jeffrey as course director. I tutored both the Islamic and Indian modules for many years and developed my research interests in the areas of Indian and Persian painting and shared, as Naman has spoken of, our mutual love of interest in ancient Indian sculpture and of course wrote the textbook on the relationship of ritual arts and um, South Asian material. Few know that actually in the 1990s, the financial success of the diploma enabled the formation of the Department of Art and Archaeology, because before that time, it was only a question of different departments according to the subject. So there was Indian department, Islam, Near Middle East department, etc. But we enabled, as John Picton, the then head as he became of Department of Art and Archaeology, enabled that to exist. In 2000, thanks to the encouragement and support of Dr. Robert Knox, keeper of the Department of Asia, and John Reeve, director of education, I took the course to the British Museum. There we established, we had a classroom right at the front of the building, and we established a room for object handling, which today is called the St. Joseph Hotung Center for um, Ceramic Studies. This period was critical in enabling us to understand the, virtual, the vital role of the museum and be sensitive to our relationship with them and with the galleries that we took students to see. In 2007, the inspirational former SOAS director, Professor Paul Webley, invited the program to return to SOAS. And Beth McKillop from the VNA joined a formal association of the postgraduate diploma with both the VNA and the British Museum. Paul understood what the course could bring to SOAS. The idea of the School of Arts was his. He wanted us to be part of the department. He saw our potential as a pathway to further study or a career in the art world and for reaching students all over the world who might not usually come to SOAS. It was, however, in 2009 that our situation was transformed by Fred Eichner. I will never forget his contributing the scholarship funds and general support for the diploma and from his Alpha Wood Foundation, an enormously generous award for the school. This donation consisted of three endowed posts and scholarships for Southeast Asian students to study either at postgraduate, diploma, MA or doctoral level. Fred saw what we were trying to achieve. He had a transformational vision of what might be possible. Peter Sharrock was also pivotal and instrumental in this initiative. Peter and Fred spent countless hours in discussion during a week in Myanmar. As Fred told me, it was on the banks of the Irrawaddy where they formulated the vision and decided to approach me and Paul Webley about a very substantial support for a Southeast Asian scholars program. I cannot truly put into words what Fred's support did for my confidence, sense of achievement, and how it enhanced the school's valuation of the diploma. For their belief in me, I must also here thank Paul Webley, Tessa Hopkins, Elizabeth Kelly, and Elizabeth Herridge. They nominated me for an MBE for service to higher education, which I received in 2015. In recent years, I've also been deeply honored by the initiative of Ida Chow and Gretchen Welsh, who very generously established a scholarship in my name. This offers an extraordinary opportunity for future students who do not have the resources to study with us. I want to here thank all our expert lecturers for their loyalty 
and how, for having continued to participate in our programs for so many years. Your scholarship and ability to communicate your love of your subject to our students has been a major factor in the diploma's success. I must also say that the role of the tutor, now convener, has been critical for enabling students to digest the tremendous diversity of opinions and images they receive. In those tutors, I must remember and mention people like, as I mentioned before, Stacy, Elaine, Melanie, George, Leslie, Peter, currently Emily, Sandra, so many of you, Mary for so many years, Doreen and um, Monica, and so many of you. The object-led approach of the postgraduate diploma is what sets it apart from other courses on Asian art history, both here in the UK and internationally. Critical is the support of the museums in giving this unique focus and enables an emphasis on the decorative arts, which is so unusual in the university at degree level. Underlying this educational experience was my wish to provide the level of individual care for all of you, from your initial inquiry to the daily support of your studies and well being. I wanted your experience to be distinct and for you to receive that extra, which was not possible for mainstream students. I cannot say goodbye without sharing this with this moment with and thanking Denise Ackford who made this aim of mine possible. She and I worked together for over 20 years. She initially came to look after the finances when her children were young. Over time, we worked together to refine the diploma and give it the structure it has today. We were both so proud of what we created. When we moved from SOAS to the British Museum, she was there at my side. And when we returned to SOAS, so did she with me. She was promoted to diploma manager and was essential to the smooth running of the courses and the pastoral care of the students, as many of you can testify. Denise kept me on the straight and narrow for many years. I always used to say she kept the rules so that I might break them. In defense of myself, I confessed I used to do this if I felt the individual had their own special interest or needs that did not always fit our procedures. In memory of her, Malcolm, Patrick and I conceived of an access scholarship fund in her name. And I'm so grateful to all of you who have contributed to this. What makes possible individual care and the smooth running of the office? It is in my view, the attitude of the team from the response to the initial inquiry telephone call or email to the sustained support throughout your study with us. Denise set these high standards and I want to express profound thanks to Patrick for continuing them. He calmly kept everything afloat when Denise and I were for periods of time not well. Single-handed, he established and initiated our online platforms. The diploma was indeed the leader of this throughout the school. I could never have got through this interim period, was it not for his calm presence, which supported us all. I'm delighted that Joe has joined him and provided the support he needs. I want to now thank Malcolm, who I'm proud to say has taken his position running and with tremendous energy. It feels the right moment to leave and hand over to him. He brings not only his academic achievements, but an understanding of the potential opportunities of the new virtual environment. Although Denise, Patrick, Peter and I set this in motion early last year with the first online Southeast Asia module, I don't think I would have had the energy to create the study days and new opportunities for collaboration across departments, museums, and auction houses that Malcolm has created. And I also wanted to thank him for embedding the diploma much more firmly than I ever achieved 
within the School of Arts with the support of Shane, for which I thank him. Now, what contributed to our success? Unreservedly, I would here thank Cymbeline from Cymbeline Media. I met Cymbeline in 2002 when I was at the British Museum. In 2003, she brought us the attention of the Financial Times, who wrote an article called, in inverted commas, The Real Ming. This was about our courses, highly complimentary, I'm happy to say, at the British Museum. This contributed enormously to raising public awareness of our program. For many years, Cymbeline has done our marketing and promoted us internationally. I must also thank the Financial Times for not getting bored of our brand image, which has remained unchanged since 2003. I want to thank my family, Robert, Toby and Harry, for sharing me with so many. When Toby and Harry were very young, in a moment of guilt, I asked them if they wanted me to give up what I was doing. They insisted I should not do that. Robert and I have shared so much through his own passion for India and his encouragement has been always there for me to continue. Indeed, I have to thank Salas for meeting him there in 1975 in the lobby, where he made the excuse to ask me about my Farsi teacher, the very well-known Professor Lampton. I have to admit, as she knew his grandfather, he eventually had a much easier time with her than I did. And it was a great initiation for me to go through her strict uh, classes. And in fact, one of her students in my very small Farsi class got in touch with me just the other day. So we're still in touch. Finally, I want to thank all of you who are here today and those who are not, and that is the alumni, for believing in the postgraduate diploma and bringing your passion and interest in the support of the courses we offer. Many of you have said that it was a transformational experience for you. And the one common theme I've noticed with so many of you when you come and first talk to me is that many of you are in transition and many have formed lifelong friends through the classes that you've attended. This is not a final farewell, as I will be still actively involved in developing this alumni community and exploring the events and courses you might like and to enable this program to develop and offer what you wish. I'm so grateful to have had the privilege of getting to know so many of you and to be able to call you friends. I will return to give the lectures on the subjects I love. I'm not saying here what I will do next, freed of the day-to-day -day responsibilities. However, I hope to work on two related fields involving my lifelong interest in ancient religion, ritual, and image. Although I am no longer director, I will be there in the background and hope very much I can keep in touch with so many of you. Denise, like me, was so proud of you. Etty, thank you so much for, for those words to, to the alumni and to, to all of us for sharing your memories and thoughts and reflections. It's, as many people have said to me, it's a, a very um, large set of shoes to fill um, coming in as the, the, the incoming director for this program. And I think, no, no, I, I would never um, want to in any way try and uh, replace, but just to build on the enormous legacy you've, you've uh, constructed. And I'm so touched as, as the kind of incoming successor to your program that you want to stay involved with, with what we do. And thank you very much as well for your, your kind words towards myself, um, Patrick, Joe, um, and the, the much wider community who you have fostered and supported over the years. That was wonderful to hear. Um, and now we have a small something for you that has been prepared by Patrick and also by the alumni. So I'll hand over to Patrick to introduce this, this short surprise that we have um, at this stage in oh. proceedings. Hi, Eddie. Um, quickly, I just wanted to appear briefly to say my own thank you. Um, it's been a genuine pleasure to work alongside you for nearly six years now, and a privilege to get, you, to, get to know you both uh, professionally, but more importantly, 
personally. Um, as we've all said, we're tremendously grateful to have your support as Malcolm, Joe and I continue the work of yourself and of course Denise, um, the importance of which we're very clearly seeing here today. Uh, more importantly, I'm aware there are many others in the audience today um, who are not able to appear in person like I am and share their own thanks. So I wanted to try and do something to address this. So I'd like to take a few minutes to share with you something I've been putting together. Hi, Hetty. This is Nicholas from Hong Kong. So nice to see you today. Um, and I'm very sorry I can't join you, but I just want to say a huge thanks for um, what was really a sort of life-changing experience for me taking your Asian Arts uh, course two and a half decades ago. And uh, I just want to congratulate you for all those decades that you've spent sharing your infectious passion and enthusiasm for Asian Art with so many uh, students around the world. Thank you for everything, for being a great mentor and a friend. I would like to wish you all the best of your life and good luck for the next adventure. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you've done. It's been life changing. Hetty, we just want to say how much we have enjoyed working with you and all the good support and encouragement you have given us. Thank you so much. You welcomed me into that program and opened up a whole world to me in terms of scholarship, knowledge, and a passion for the cultures and the arts of Asia. Take care, good friend. Thank you so much for imparting your wisdom throughout the lectures and object study sessions at SOAS. I really hope that we get to meet soon in the future. And until then, I will be reading your wonderful books. It's been a very long and important journey, Hetty. And I can only wish you from the bottom of my heart my deepest gratitude and great strength for the next chapter in your life. Thank you very much. I wanted to wish you the very best of luck for your retirement. Thank you very much for everything. It's to you that I was introduced to totally new and very exciting cultures that have really changed my life and my outlook. There are now many different people who have become very close and loving friends including yourself. Hi, Hi Hetty. It is an honor and a great opportunity for us to have you as our lecturer. We'll miss you and we wish you the best for your retirement. Thank you. You have changed our lives and through us, you have opened the way for our son to understand his Chinese heritage and culture. Hello, Hetty. Uh, I would like to say thank you for your lecture and your help during my uh, study in SOAS and wish you good luck and good health. Thank you. Thank you very much. All the best. Good luck. Thank you very much indeed for all the wonderful times we've had. I'm so grateful and uh, I'm thrilled for all that you've accomplished and everything that you've done. We want to wish you all the best for the future. And happy retirement. Thank you so much for all your help over the years. I can never thank you enough. Uh, you helped me so much in my life. Thank you very, very much. All good wishes for the years ahead. I hear you're retiring. I hope you get as much enjoyment there as you, you gave in the uh, courses and programs you did. I want to wish you the happiest of retirements. Thank you very much for your dedication and your commitment to teaching students around the world. With your knowledge, your abilities, your personality, your enthusiasm, we have all benefited hugely. Thank you so much for your support and your interesting lectures. Hello, Hedy. I am Tata from Lima. I really appreciate you. you. Wish you all the best and good luck. Thank you, Hedy. You've been inspirational and opened the minds of so many people, and especially of mine. You've left behind a wonderful legacy. I wish you all the best for the future. I can't imagine you actually retiring. Good luck and many thanks. All good wishes in your next chapter. I had a great time at SOAS. I love your lectures very much. Please give your safety, healthy, and wonderful retirement. Thank you so, so much for all your help and uh, everything you've done for our um, Asian art society. Thank you so much for your generosity and kindness over the years. And I wish you the best of luck in your next steps. Thank you for everything you've done. Wish you a wonderful time and retirement, although I can hardly imagine you retired. 
Kate, I really wanted to wish you all the best for your retirement. I hope that this coming leg of your life is as eventful and as wonderful as what the last many years have been. Lots of love. Thank you very much for having been such a wonderful teacher and mentor for me for all of these years. You have shaped my life and career in ways that you cannot even start thinking or fathoming. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for one of the best uh, experiences I have had, certainly since coming to England. I will be forever grateful to you and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Hetty. Happy retirement, Hetty. All the very best to you. Thank you, Hetty. Sending you love and best wishes. Wishing you all the very best. Congratulations on your retirement. Thank you so much for all you've done. You've been a source of inspiration. I hope you have a wonderful retirement ahead of you. Thank you so much for all your work. Thank you for everything you did to promote the understanding of Asian art in Europe. Thank you for everything and I wish you all the best. I always remember you. Love you. Hetty, this is a ginkgo, the mother of all trees, and this one is in my garden. And I must, talking about mothers, I must say that you are almost a mother to so many of us who have grown and matured in that parallel universe that you've created at SOAS. Dearest Hetty, I want to wish you all the best for your retirement. You've created a wonderful legacy in the postgraduate diploma course. You've inspired many people over the years and we'll miss you greatly. Hope you have a wonderful retirement. I'm so proud of you as a friend, as a colleague, and wish you the very, very best. Your vision, dedication, and passion made the program a su the success that it is today. You gave me and many, many others your expertise, your kindness, and your friendship. Thank you for the diploma, uh, for your support, and for your friendship. I'm forever grateful. Uh, best wishes. You and the course made such an impact on my life. I think you're not just the founder of the course, but I think you're its heart and soul. What a wonderful, wonderful friend and colleague you've been all these years and how much I enjoyed teaching for the postgraduate diploma and how much I learned from you. Thank you for everything that you've done for me because I don't think you realise how much you have done for me. I owe you so much. It has been an absolute joy to be involved in the diploma program for the last 13 years. I just would like to wish you all the best and health for your well-reserved retirement. All I can tell you is that retirement is wonderful and good luck in your future life. I have always admired your dedication, your sang-froid and your perseverance with regard to the justifiably world-famous Asian art courses you've set up. I've been very glad to have been associated with them over the years. You deserve and I hope you have a very long, happy and fruitful retirement. Thank you for your generosity and your warmth, especially for all of us, the Alphabet students. And I'm sending you my best wishes all the way from Indonesia. I know that many people would like to thank you, including myself, of course, for all your kindness, help and generosity, sending you all my love. I want to join the others in congratulating you and thanking you for creating this wonderful program of modules and short courses, and also for, for creating this worldwide community of learners, colleagues and friends. Hetty, you've not only created and developed an extraordinary course, but you've also built a community of people from all over the world. You've enriched the past seven years uh, for me, and I really want to tell you how much uh, that has meant. And in particular, how much it has created a wonderful circle around the world of friendship with you in the center. All good things. Thanks. We all love you. Thank you. We all love you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have to get a tissue. I'm completely overwhelmed. I, I have to go and get a tissue, please, Malcolm. I just completely, you know, you found Sabiha even. I, I just can't tell you how much 
it all means to see a bit more. So can I just quickly go and get a tissue? Of course. Well, huge thank you to, to Patrick for, for being the kind of the instigator and the, the, the person who made that happen. Okay, well, while we're waiting for Hetty to rejoin us, I just want to say my own thanks to, um, to all of the alumni and uh, friends, contributors and supporters and members of the Diploma family who've contributed to, to that video and indeed um, uh, putting those, those words and those sentiments so clearly shared by so many uh, over such a wide expanse of the world. Um, your warmth, your enthusiasm, your support and your generosity has, has shaped the core of this programme and what it can be, uh, what it is uh, and what it will be and indeed what it means to so many. And indeed, that generosity is at the core of, um, of the future of the programme as well, um, not least of all in the scholarships that we are able to offer to support access, inclusion and widening participation in, uh, in this programme that, that Hetty has established in the years to come. Um, in this year, I'm thrilled, touched and deeply moved to be able to say that we have three separate scholarship programmes incorporated into our 2021-2022 our offering. Um, the first is the, um, uh, the Alpha Wood programme, which is funding six distinct uh, scholars from Southeast Asia, joining us in, in the autumn term of this year to take the full diploma. But I'd also like to thank, um, well, in addition to obviously thanking the Alpha Wood for their substantial and sustaining donation, I'd like to thank the alumni for their, um, their generous donations to two other programmes we're offering in this year. Hetsy mentioned earlier the Denise Ackford Memorial Scholarship, um, which has been generously set up through uh, donations by our alumni. And this year will fund two half fee scholarships for students from anywhere in the world to take a full diploma course at half the usual course fee. And we, we feel this is really a, a fitting and um, an appropriate uh, legacy for, for Denise, who cared so much about the community from which we have just heard um, and about I was did so much to include on a personal level and on a professional level, as wide as possible an audience that could join the diploma. So we're thank you from, uh, from myself, from Hetty, from everyone at SOAS, for all of you who've contributed to that particular program, the Nadi Sackford Memorial Access Scholarship. It's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to offer. Um, and in addition to both the, uh, the substantial and transformative generosity of Alpha Wood and the significant impact of uh, those of you who've supported the, the scholarship in Denise's memory, I also want to mention the, the crucial um, offering that we have this year, the Dr. Hetty Elgood Scholarship, which was initiated in 2018 by Ida Chow and Gretchen Walsh, who we, we heard from in the video there, um, course alumni and close friends of Hetty. Um, this programme is now entering its third, third round of, of, of scholars um, and following from this initial instigation three years ago in uh, 2018, this year we at the Diploma with, with the support of our alumni are, are reaching out to you once again to say we are thrilled to announce that this programme will be able to continue for the years ahead uh, and we hope to sustain that even longer than is, is currently possible. Um, we have had an enormous um, series of donations from anonymous alumni with a current fundraising total of over £100,000 sterling to support future scholars and the Dr Hetty Elgood Scholarship Programme, which encompasses both full fees and a, a London living stipend of £15,000 per year. Um, and in addition to this generous um, block of donations that we have received and pledges, um, an anonymous donor has further to this pledged an additional £10,000 match funding for any further donations that um, you as our alumni uh, may be willing to, to offer to SOAS and to this programme. So we really hope that you will continue um, to, to support us in, in any way that you, you can. Um, and if you want to hear more about the Hetty Elgood Scholarship, about what we offer and, and how we, we work hard to make sure this reaches the widest possible number of people, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and, and we'll be in touch with you. Um, and if you, you wish to donate, um, any amount would be greatly appreciated in, in ensuring that the Hetty Elgood Scholarship and Hetty's legacy uh, for access, inclusion and creating that wide global community of scholars, curators and future professionals in the Asian art world is, is continuing long into the future. Um, thank you once again to all those of you who've supported us in so many different ways, whether through donation, whether through contributions to the course or contributions in the classroom. Um, and really, I'll, I'll now hand back over to, to to say a few words in response to the video we just watched. Uh, no, I was completely amazed. I mean, Patrick, it is so sweet of you. I don't know how you found people like Sabiha. And I mean, I was completely in floods of tears, it was just unbelievable. So it was a huge surprise. And I'm 
I just, you know, I can't find the words to say my surprise. It really was. I thought, what is he doing? What is the surprise? You know, I, I just didn't anticipate it. So I am enormously grateful for the work that must have taken him and for everybody who contributed to it. Amazing. From all over the world. So I'm so grateful. <laughs>